What is up, you guys? And for welcome to Honor vs. Vipsis and his uh, Helsinki High Dragons. Kind of similar that one. How about that? Uh, but yeah, Vipsis has actually been one of those players that um, I'm easily considered probably the best in the league. Uh, and his team kind of represents that. Um, that is, that he, he plays a very, very bulky offensive, as far as I'm aware. And he plays for a longer game, and I think his team kind of reflects that rather well. He's very, very well synergized, and uh, um, my team plan has been kind of up and down. I actually had nine Pokemon that made sense bringing, and then I decided to bring, as you guys see, this six on the screen. Though, mind you, I will talk about the monsters that didn't make it, mainly to kind of just talk about my process why they didn't make it. Uh, so, first and foremost, um, his team is as follows Curum Black. Landers, Ferian, Stami, Alolan Muck, Rodham Heat, Whimsicard, and um, then we have the Brown Song, Confagricus, Seismitoad, uh, Lick Licky, and the Mega Law Pony. So, overall, this is a team I feel is really tough. Um, it's speed enough to outspeed my, I think, my primal threats, and it's also defensive enough to keep some of my threats away. Um, I honestly don't think there's a way for me to prep for all of these and still do well. And depending on his defensive core, I could very well just be playing for differentials and going in with the mindset of actually potentially losing. Uh, or I could be trying to get a win, but it's going to be narrow depending on what defensive core it brings. If it brings the right defensive core, which is what I'm building for, clearly here, uh, then I shouldn't have an issue. But that said, yeah, this is a team that I feel I can't parry that well. First and foremost, the team I'm expecting. I expect Curum Black to make it. I expect Landris, since it's the only real defogger, I would say. Um, I also expect Mega Law Pony. And I expect Rotom Heat. Rotom Heat is a massive threat towards my team. And uh, um, I really don't know how to parry it well. Besides bringing certain Pokemon here, but I don't bring one of those that I think are the number one check towards that. And uh, we'll see whether or not that it damaged me. Um, but on that, I think Alolan Muck makes sense for the matchup, and then is whether he brings a Bronze Song or Confagricus. Um, Stormy could also be a thing, but he needs either Bronze Song or Confagricus. Uh, for me, I think Bronze Song makes the most sense. If it brings Confagricus, then I might actually be in trouble. Uh, it's not the defensive Pokemon I do expect. Um, so with that said, uh, the team I'm bringing is first and foremost, you guys can see already, it's the Tangrowth. Um, nothing to it. Um, the build here is especially defensive with a bold nature. Um, and it's really simple as that. It has in the power ice. It has Koba Berry to, uh, if it is an offensive Landorus, I should be able to actually survive a sea fly at plus two. Uh, I actually didn't need an investment for that, which was kind of cool. Um, barring that it isn't adamant, but I don't see the reason. If he goes adamant, Mesprit outspeeds it, and then he's in trouble if it is an offensive Mesprit, which I'm not bringing, but yeah, that's a thing to keep out on. Uh, moveset, pretty standard here. Um, the thing is here, both Bronson and Configuricus do wall Tangrow to a certain extent, so decided to have Giga Rain, Hidden Power Ice, Earthquake, mainly for uh, Alola Muck, which is a switch in here, and then Lead Seed to be able to kind of stall things out. Um, this is not what I would say the ideal uh, move set for uh, a Tangrowth, but it is plausible to use this, though, like I said here, it's more of a bait set than, than, than a specially defensive wall. The Assault Vest variant would have been much more effective in this game, but there are matchups here that walls me out or offensively check me, and I kind of want to try to get the best out of that, so this was my choice, basically. Second Pokemon here, Mesprit. Um, this variant, well, I was struggling here what I wanted to bring but it ended up with a very very fat Mesprit with a small speed investment basically to outspeed any type of uh, speed or size method uh, but that was basically it like other than that really wasn't a reason to it this is a very 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 standard PU Mesprit um, it can be effective um, I have a lot of ideas what I wanted to try out with we clearly have bold nature here also and the moveset here is Psychic, Thunderbolt, Stealth, Rocking, U-Turn. I was debating whether I should have Healing Wish or U-Turn, ending up with U-Turn in case Stami makes it, um, because then I can pivot around that. But then again, you know, if Alolomak comes in, Pursuit is an aspect, and Pursuit will absolutely destroy me. So um, it's, like I said, not the ideal set, but it's a set I see working to get my rocks up. What's between him and, or Megadayenshi? 
and the IMG has a tougher time here than Mesprit. So yeah, it made sense bringing Mesprit. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, second Pokemon up is actually a Curse Scissor. This set will only work if Alolan Muck is gone, um, and Rotom Heat is whittled down. Now the thing is here with the set, um, it is an adamant version and, and an uninvested one of that, and um, I was debating having a more offensive variant with Curse, and also debating, of course, uh, to have the likes of a Swordstance variant, but I thought Curse was better, because it means I can check Landers and Law Pony effortlessly. It also means that if he's Configuricus, if he brings that, if he tries to um, wall me out, I can set up against that. But as I said, Soul Stats is an aspect I did consider, and uh, depending on how this game goes, uh, I might actually feel that Soul Stats can be a better option. But defensively, this set makes sense, and I will do my very best to try to make this one work. Um, I've never tried a sister like this, and I'm not accustomed to using such a defensive set. I'm not accustomed to using a Mega Sister that don't U turn. So I'll see how that works, but it's a bullet punch, we have knockoff, curse, roost, so we actually don't have any defog option here. I heavily expect my opponent to bring that in his landers, uh, because I'm not effectively weak to rocks in this game, so it makes no reason for me to actually bring in that. And he has no option getting toxic spike nonsense or stacking against me, so uh, my building process was easier here, to be honest. Uh, then we come to probably to my number one Pokemon that should do a lot of work here, and that is Conkeller. Um... Now I had issues here also, because I did want to use the Flame Orb set, but since I don't have Assault Vest on Tangrove, um, I really don't have a way of switching into the likes of Kirim. So it made sense bringing him like this, and this is a very specially defensive uh, Configuricus, with a few speed investments. Here is mainly to speed actually the Lola Muck, which I feel is a Pokemon that, if he doesn't have a will o -Wisp option on his uh, Configuricus, I should be able to try to bait for getting poison from the Lola Muck, which could very well have poison jab, or even better, poison touch. Uh, and that should help me tremendously, but that's just an idea, and uh, it's a concept at best. O overall, though, I think Configuricus works very well in this matchup. Mac Punch do annihilate a few of his offensive options, and um, the only Pokemon I do fear is Slanderous, who could have C-Fly, that clearly knocks me out. Uh, and of course Adamant, like, there is, this is a very, very offensive Conkildur. Uh, combination of Drain Punch, Knock Off, Ice Punch, and Mock Punch. Uh, basically, my bread and butter should be Drain Punch, but if Config Greek is, is active in this game, Knock Off is gonna be my best option to try to damage that. And I'm gonna stay in if I have a matchup versus Config Greek, but I'd rather try to take that one down to open up the aspects for another Pokemon, which I'm gonna mention after Psyguard. Psyguard, super standard. It's a fat, fat Thousand Arrows variant and uh, has extreme speed, super power, and glare. Um, that is some lightning. Never mind. <laughs> uh, anyway, Sire variant here is. Um, I was debating two sets. I was debating a combination of Substitute, Coil, and Dragon Dance with only Faust and Arrows. Uh, it clearly is a wall by Whimsicott, and eventually I backed out on that one. Um, I think that set would have worked tremendously, but I don't feel confident enough to use it. Uh, the other set here is the uh, Choice Banded Thousand Arrow set. Uh, while we do have a lot of offensive options, this set is only here to spam Thousand Arrows. And it's fairly offensive. It's super defensive, be able to actually come in against a Law Punch and survive an Ice Punch. If I'm forced to, but should be able to pull that off, but that's real about it. Um, the speed investment is for... I think it... No, I can't remember. <laughs> I have speed investment. Anyway, um, real enough into it. I did this uh, these builds on Monday, and I, I'm like, what is it? Two hours away from battling him. So, if I'm forgetting something, that you know, poor me. But overall, this Cyber should be able to use spams. Um, Thousand arrows should do well at that. And um, I guess the only set I do fear is um, Curin Black. Of course, outspeeds and knocks and knocks me out uh, easily. Uh, same thing here with the Landorus, if that's in Power Ice, and of course Lopin with Ice Punch will do a significant amount of damage, and then we have Rotom. Depending on his set, he should be carrying Hidden Power Ice. Um, I see no reason for him bringing anything else, and that's something I need to watch out for, so I, I kind of need to check whether or not I outspeed that Rotom or not, and that I don't want to go too speedy myself here, because of course I want to be somewhat bulky here. 
Uh, a fat Zygarde is a happy Zygarde, hence this is what we use. Um, last Pokemon is an adamant variant of its Horos. Now this Pokemon can either make it or break it for me. Um, I debated to bring in Tauros or Greninja, and Greninja offensively makes a lot more sense. Tauros is just harder to switch into, which is why I brought it. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very, very easy set here. We have Body Slam, Earthquake, uh, and Iron Head to get it with the likes of Ice Beam. Ice Beam, of course, knocks out Lando. Iron Head is good for Cure him. Earthquake is good for Dalola Muck. Body Slam is good for everything else. Only Pokemon wall in this is Configuricus, and of course, potentially Bronze Song, depending on its hidden ability. God damn it. Um, but yeah, I was really, really iffy about bringing this set for a lot of reasons, to be honest. But for me, what makes a lot more sense towards this game was that, um, well, let's just face it. It's, it's an offensive option that I think my opponent can't switch into well against. So yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling good about this, even though I know, um, we're looking at a matchup that could potentially eat me. Um, but the scarf set means that no, nothing really switches in on that, and uh, I should be able to do well. Now, I should mention the sets that could have break or made it. Um, first and foremost was the Greninja set, which is speed enough to outspeed Whimsicott uh, with spikes, Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, Hydro Pump, hits everything in his team really well. Um, awful switching is the Law Pony, which I don't switch in well to. I don't want to switch into that Pokemon more often than I should. Uh, but this was a Pokemon I heavily considered for this matchup. Um, barely made it. And then we had whether or not to bring Dianchi or or Mesprit. Dianchi's set would have been like this. Power, Power Gem, Moonblast, Toxic, Stealth Rock. Um, with a few speed investments on speed Alola Muck. Um, now, the thing is here, Alola Muck is going to most likely be um, an Assault Vest variant, which means this set could have been eradicated if that's the case. Uh, so I did consider the Diamond Storm, but yeah, overall Dianchi just doesn't do that well in this matchup. So eventually I decided to go against that. And the last set that I really, really wanted to bring was Thunderous with the Focus Blast, actually Hidden Power Ice and Thunderbolt to get over like some Thunder Wave. Um, reason for it not making it, because it's a modest set, because I really have no reason of outspeeding Stommy and Whimsicott, because I can't. Uh, so I'm rather be speedy enough to speed here in black if it is some speedier variant of that. Uh, and I just Yasha Berry also, just in case off. But this set makes a lot of sense to this matchup. The reason it isn't making it is because since I don't have a hassle removal this game, Thunderous feels tough to bring in in case he decides to play a more defensive game, which I know already plays bulky offensive. So I don't know. I just didn't have it in me to bring it in. That said, these three really were Pokemon that I wanted to bring Greninja more um, towards that. We'll bring it next game, if anything, possibly. Um, because I think the matchup are allowing it, but I thought Taurus here is better. And it's whether or not that eventually gonna work or not. I'm, I am a bit scared about the game. Like I said, if it brings the right defensive core, then Greninja would have been a better option. And I'm going to lose heavily here. Everything that is with Configuricus is gonna be tough on my team, and I am very aware of that. Uh, so I'm going in here trying to win, but I'm also banking on a certain matchup to do better. So I'm banking heavily on Bronzong, I'm banking on a potential Whimsy card. So I really, really hope I didn't make a wrong call there. And if I did, hopefully I don't lose 6-0 at least. That's, that's my goal. So anyway, with that said, head over to the bell itself. What is up guys, and of course welcome to our first UBL battle versus Vipsis and the Helsinki Hydreigons. Probably one of the tougher teams for the season, to be um, very, very, very honest. And I'm recording this live mainly because I kind of want to be lazy and not actually editing anything more than necessary. If you see my team analysis, you know exactly what I'm bringing. It's going to be linked in the same episode and not in... Um, like a, a separate one, which I know a few people do. I kind of feel those videos are wasted. If you're interested in that, you can watch it. If you, and you have the option to, of course, not. All right, this looks the part actually. A few very surprised not to see Starmie here on his team, uh, but that's about it. Like we see, we see Rodum, we see Tangler. I was gonna say, but Alola Muck, Confegricus, Confeg um. Landers, Kieran Black, and Lopani. So a very tough speed here overall. 
and uh, yeah, this can be a tough game. Configure because it's very, very tough on me. I'm glad not to see Bronson, however. Um, it leads me to believe Landers is his rocker if he has rocks at all. And for spinning, that would make Landers his defogger also. So it's kind of a risky situation we got here. Um, we'll see what I do. I think my best lead, to be honest, is to get a Brock I think that's going to be helpful. So I'm going to start with Mesprit. We'll take it from there. I'm um, just going to write down the Pokemon. Let's see. There we go. Pen and paper. Usually do this mainly to keep tabs on uh, what I'm fending up against. Um, let's see. Just going to start anyway. So, Rotom. Lando, Confagricus, um, Mega Bunny, and that's my. If you hear something, then it's my daughter. Um, it's always tough trying to record while she's away, of course. Let's see, start with Gordon, that's Rotom, makes sense, um, and Curum Black. Um, it all depends on the set, but I'm not fearing Rotom, even though it can be very, very, very aggressive. And of course it checks my Psygod very well, so that's a thing. Goes directly for Overheat, so that's gonna do a nasty amount of damage towards me. Wow, yeah. That's an offensive variant, that's for sure. We get Rocks up, which is great. That couldn't be Specs damage, could it? A very hard time believing that. Um, I'm just gonna try to preserve this as well as I can, so I can actually switch out to uh, my uh, Conkelder, knowing that since it's Assault Vest, that it should be able to eat any minus one damage, if anything. The thing is here, he did outspeed me, but I have no speed investment. Uh, basically, the only thing I um, invested to be able to outspeed our defensive seismitoad, so that's basically nothing. As we see on our roll rates, makes sense. And this should, of course, do anything. I actually still did a fair amount of damage. So... Um, Do I want to be over-aggressive here, predicting the Landers play? Is it that or Confagricus? Yeah, I'm going for Ice Punch. It's a weird play, but I think it's the right one. Um, Landers makes sense here, in case I go for knockoff, right? Bad ninjas, that's... That's the wrong one, that's for sure. So now I'm mummified. Fingers though. Like, he can still go for a will wisp on me. I still want to get knock off out of the way. And I should be able to outspeed and do a good chunk here anyway. So don't have to worry about guts at first, at least. We just did a lot of damage though there. Hmm. I'm starting to consider if that Rotom is um, potentially Specs, actually. And if so, that's going to be carrying Hidden Power Ice. I really need damage on this one, though, because it's the only switching he has that really can take on Tauros. So if he stays in, that's going to be great. Come on, come on Vipsis, I know you want to. I know for me you need to, right? So yeah, it stays in. Oh, that's the Coldwell Berry, so right. Still gonna do a lot though. Oh, barely anything actually. And there's a Shadow Ball. And that didn't do anything, so it's alright. That means I can keep staying in. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm gonna keep attacking. Um, I want him to will o -Wisp, basically. Rest. Oh, that's boring. So we have Rest and Shadow Ball. So one of those. So right, I'm gonna switch out. That's boring. That's very boring, actually. Kind of regret not bringing Greninja right now. Let's see, is it a sleep talk? It shouldn't be. Oh, it is. So we see a sleep talk to get rid of likes off another wrist. I wonder. Sleep talk. What set could, could this be? Things are, I think, cure him. Cure in black is a fair switch in. But this Pokemon all of a sudden turned rather ugly because we don't know its last move whether it is. Uh, it's clearly fully defensive, but um, if it has Will O Wisp or whatnot, or if it has no status at all, which could be very, very annoying because that means I've got Sin Vein basically. And I will kick myself for not having Flame Orb. So right, he's going to switch out. We know that's a, that one is sleeping. We're gonna switch into Bob. That makes sense. We're gonna see that one, and that's gonna be helpful. So we're clearly showcasing that we're not a salt vest. Now I am not a brave man. So I'm actually going to switch into my Cobalion again. Um, the thing is here, he's either Ice Punch or... Um, Ice Punch or Fire Punch, depending on which one I want to deal with. But we're going to expect him to Pursuit Knockoff. Um, and uh, with that, of course, Poison Jab or Gunk Shot. So, like I said, one of the Elemental Punch would make sense. It just, which one do he want to... Uh, define as being or wall with and we're just about really to find out however I think Confagricus is gonna be my number one paint before to be dealing with uh, which means I probably need to keep um, or at least try to keep my um, Come on, knock off, knock off, knock off. Fire punch. Alright, that works too. And the poison touch. Nice. It's the worst out of two, but at least we got something. Do I dare go for a knock or drain punch here? He could have Shadow Sneak, but it's not gonna KO. I go for another knockoff. Because if it stays in, he loses his Figgy if it isn't a Salt Vest. And that means he can recycle that back if it is that set, which it shouldn't be. It should be a Salt Vest. But at least they have the option to kind of gauge that, and that's going to be very important towards me. Because if it stays in, Drain Punch could very well KO. So he's not going to, he shouldn't. It is my safest play. Um, Alright, he stayed in. So we knock off what? Assault Vest. Those are poison jab. We lose Cobalion. 
That's unfortunate, actually. I'm not gonna lie, didn't expect that. However, Drain Punch. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, that starts. Now we're gonna get swept by Love Honey, I'm sure. Eventually. Potentially. He draws. Alright. Saves that to Lengthal, which is Lando. Hmm. Yeah, I still did, did good damage there though. So it's a left or set with what I assume could be self rocks. We're switching in Sister here because I'm pretty sure it's going to be Hidden Power Ice. Self Rocks, of course, is going to be a thing here. We have leftovers, we can take that for granted. Alola Muck, I think, is no longer a threat. Hmm. Defog, alright. I think it's here, I think his best switch in here should be Rotom. So I'm actually gonna go directly for a knockoff here. I don't think there is any downside to that. Like I said, it could be carrying him in power fire, but it's more likely to be in a power ice. But since it's Z Fog leftovers, we know it most likely could have um, he did stay it at least, but um, I'm, I'm feeling the Stealth Rocks, potentially Earthquake, and Filler. We have Filler in U-turn. So that's good. Because I don't want to showcase I'm Curse just yet. That means so far there's no hazards on either team on the field right now, which is kind of good, I guess. Gordon, which is the Rotom. Alright, so we get damage on that one, which is going to be huge. Choice picks. Right, that made sense. So I'm switch in. Uh, I feel a potentially Volt switch. Um, he should be having hidden power ice, no doubt. But I kind of want to bait it, which means I'm hoping for an overheat and then switching Tauros afterwards to um, to bait for that hidden power ice or a potential Volt switch. Let's find out. Ghost Rhythm Power. That's a strong play. That's a strong play. That's a very strong play. That's a good prediction.
who had issue build for this team, mainly because of the Rodom. Rodom really has threw me off, and I knew eventually we'll get there. We <laughs> just, bam, there we go. Still shouldn't be too bad though, like... I'm having my feelings that he's going to risk it. I'm gonna go for extreme speed, hoping it's enough to KO, but if it isn't, then, you know, it's going to be unfortunate. But that's basically it. Because I feel Luce and Conkelder kind of made this game impossible for me to win anyway. So I'm playing for differentials, even though I have a still a chance, but Configuricus is just too tough for me at the moment. It actually is. I mean, I'm still like, hmm. When I build my few last seconds here, I kind of, kind of forgot Configuricus existed. I was so focused on Bronze Song in this team that I felt that you know I probably can wiggle around with that, but I simply couldn't. Right, he does switch out. That's both good and bad, depending on his switch in, which is Bob. That's gonna be the Lola Muck, and we go in to knock that one out. So we're in 6 0, which is fine. So he's switching out, should be Confricus or Confagricus. Dear Lord, that's t t I think that's name is impossible to say. Because I think E speed kind of reveals that I am slower potentially than that Rodom. It wouldn't matter though, it did a sack play, so that would have turned out the same no matter what, but yeah, that's still worth keeping in mind. Because as of this moment, we are we are not looking strong at all here. I am I am not feeling this one. Forgotten! They cure him. <laughs> I'll say. Thing is here, I really, really, really need to get my rocks up. Let's see his remaining Pokemon, Lando. Hmm. Do I rather want to get the damage on this just than try to recope somehow? I'm starting to think that's like my only real option left. <laughs> yeah, I'm sacking it. Thing is here, it's very bulky, Curem, so I get damage, but that's not gonna help. Right, goes with him for fire. That's good. That's really good. Hmm. So right, I think it's gonna follow that up with my potential ice beam, I guess. <laughs> Let's find out. I'm being risky now. I'm being very risky. Oh, he's gonna roost up though. He's going to roost up. That's that's not scary. So I'm gonna go for Iron Head. I mean, that's my only play here. Even though I know Confagricus is a very fierce switching, so is Landris. That's the matter. Right, switches that one out. I think Confagrius is one coming in, yeah. Or bandages. Which is very much asleep. We're gonna get a Shear Force boosted of nothing. And that yeah, looks apart. I really can't damage this one, can I? Well, 
right? He's gonna sleep talk and it's whether he gets um, Shadow Ball or um, <laughs> or his filler move. I really wanna know what it is. If it's Toxic Spikes or if it's Knock Off, Trick Room. I have no idea what it would be that, but it's an option, I guess. I really want to get my Mesprit in on this and just get the rocks up because then at least I'm forcing Lando again to defog or be forced to stay in and I get massive ships because I'm questioning if I really can beat Config because uh, with Scissor at this moment I I'm feeling I can't so I'm just hoping that I'll get the option to set up to potentially try to Hard switches to Gordon, which is the Rodum. Nasty man. And there is no downplay go for overheat at all here. I have investment on special defense. I'm gonna, um, gonna try to do something weird here. I'm basically losing here, aren't I? This is feel. I, I feel I'm being very hard checked here. Or should I just give up rocks? I guess I should. Please go for overheat, right? Is there a Volt Switch? Because of Volt Switch, this is a master of disguise. But overheat, I think, is the better play. Yeah, there it is. So with that special defense lowered, I should at least be able to go back to Bo Raichu here and actually get the lead seat off. Because <laughs> now I don't fear it. Like, Overheat will do potentially around half, but at least he's going to be kept being chipped down towards that or due to that. So Volt Switch is the better play by far. And I think Curran Black should be his switch into this. And we already know we got Hidden Power of Fire. Gee, I really, really, really regret not having Greninja here. It would have been the best Pokemon of the wrap-up, and I am very aware of that. I'm frustratingly aware of that. Ah, it blows my mind. Right, goes to the forgotten Pokemon, which is now, of course, without self-rocks, not shipped down. And that is not helping. Ah, further down the rabbit hole. <laughs> that really, 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 really sucked. Like that was potentially the only way I was going to be able to kind of ship out. Um. Ah, oh, that, that stinks. That stinks a lot. <sighs> that was the only one that's going to potentially survive a hidden part of fire. Uh, and, you know, forcing it out. Um, now, the best player here for him is go for Fusion Bolt. Keeps going for hidden power. Good. I 
I need to get him shipped down, and I I know that. I actually didn't expect a um, defensive Kyrampus battle. I was very, very surprised by that. Um, it should have been the power of fire, roost, of course, and then I think it's her power and ice beam. I don't think he has a dragon stab, I don't think he needed that. Potentially has iron head for the NG, but since it feels necessary with her power in mind. So, had an assault vest Tangrowth that could have potentially checked this Pokemon, but I, I won't risk it. I don't feel I need to try to risk it. One thing I would need to do though, however, is actually get an Iron Head on this one. Because right now my series of play is get this one shipped down. Him knocking out my quote unquote forgotten. I'm switching into my curse. Sis or Ghost Rock curse versus switch out to Country Grigus. Yes, he says in good. Yeah, that did all right. And there's Ice Beam. This is going to be KOing, no matter what, really. Um, yeah, that crit won't matter. Doesn't matter at all. All right. His in power fire shouldn't KO, and I think, like I said, Configuricus is his best switching. I think. I know he can risk this Pokemon. Um, like, if he doesn't play for differentials, he could risk it and actually sack Kyurem. Since I do believe, uh, in theory, Rodon should be able to wrap up fairly safely. It just depends on how we want to view this endgame. I mean, if I'm lucky, his go to Lander is thinking he can defensively check it, which shouldn't be possible. I'm just very, very curious about that Rotom. Is it fully speed? Is it timid? Like Rotom naturally outspeed Mesprits, I haven't been forced to check its speed here at all. Right now, I really wish it was Sword Stance. I think that would have been a lot more effective at this point. Or it would have been much more effective at this point. So, oh. right, he switches out. That's good. To a length hall, which is the Landorus. So goes for intimidate. I go for the curse because I can. So now we should you turn to um, to Rodum. Which means I go for a regular knockoff. Because this is where I realize that Scissor is checking Lopunny and Landris at this point. So the only way of knocking this Pokemon out is stalling with Capri Dricus or hoping that Rodon can do enough damage towards it. And I am fine with either. Goes with Stealth Rocks. Risky boy. Should I go for another curse? I really should. He's considering if he goes for... Yeah, there we go. I think he's being stressed out here, because he's trying to realize... 
whether or not you should sack the Lando or let me set up. So we're gonna try another one. I think it's gonna U-turn this time instead. Oh, goes to Stealth Rock again. Uh, knockoff is not gonna kill. I'm gonna go for knockoff again. Ghost for Earthquake. Fah. That wasn't good. That isn't good at all. That's not what you wanted to see. There is Gordon. And at plus one, we're not gonna knock this Pokemon off. And this play should be overheat every time. So we have a Saigar play at our hand, and we're going to lose. Damn it. Had it been Sword Stance, I knew I needed two Sword Stances to figure that out. And I just didn't have that option. And it's fine, it's just annoying. <laughs> However... Okay, at least go for that 3-3, three, three, right? So we're gonna go for Elite Seed. Hoping it goes for overheat, trying to take me out instead, we can get the ship on this Pokemon. But a 4 times resisted bullet punch is not something you want to try to convince any everybody about that that's something that's going to work, it's, it, it's not. Um, it's so... Ooh, it's so tough though, because I knew how to have Greninja in this game, which was something I was debating to bring or not. Um, it would have made a difference this game because we already know that his only Pokemon outspeeding that is the Law Pony, which is fairly shicked here. And I am feeling frustrated because I knew, I knew that was a thing, and I had an, a strategy I was gonna do, and um, I'm gonna say I failed to do it. At least we recover a lot of damage here. Um, I'm gonna do the risky play here. I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna hope he roost. We goes from IP, Ice Beam. I think Kid and Power Fire takes me out, and if it does, that's fine. Because I can't win anyway. I need to, him for do something strange. And it goes for roost, so he's going for the strange. He's going for the strange. That sounded mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, it just means that, that that is helpful for me that it did that. So... Cursed and Bullet Punch. Hoping I survive a hidden power fire. Hope. Ooh, that 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 is a nope. That is me trying my very best and not succeeding. All right, loses this 4-0. It's fine. Um, this was, in my honest opinion, my toughest opponent in this league, and I knew I had to build with a lot of aspects in mind that clearly didn't work here, and uh, it's okay. I'm losing this 4-0 because I just didn't bring the right mod for the matchup. It could have been a trio. It could have been. It didn't turn out to be. I'm getting destroyed here. And I think it all boils down to one crucial play. And that is actually me not going for Drain Punch with Conkildur. Uh, I think that settled the game very early on. Because, well, he shouldn't stay in with his Alolan Muck. Um... He really, really shouldn't have done that, because Drain Punch just knocks out the Lola Muck. Um, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, I mean that, that that was a weird play. But it also paved the way for 
him winning because all of a sudden I did another prediction that ended up going heavily in his favor. So, yeah, I mean, Vepsis was the better player, no joke or no, no doubt about it. So, really, Vepsis and um, um, Helsinki Hydreigon, sorry for that. Uh, good luck in the rest of the season. Really hope to meet you in the playoff, and I need to clearly step up my game. I was this was a tough defeat. I lost because I overpredicted and uh, yeah, overpredicted. And quite frankly, I was heavily checked from there on out, and it was just basically a way of trying to not lose 6-0 from there on out. So um, yeah, I mean, faults on me. I'm going up against a good opponent here who did everything close to right here. And I just couldn't match up. Even the situation here with Curse versus Lando. Had I been ballsy, keep going for Curse, uh, I would have been forced to be at plus 5 or 4. To be able to knock out with Bullet Punch. So, yeah, it was not going to work. And I'm very aware of that. Um, I should have gone for it, but there was no way I was going to win anyway. I'm sure. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this battle. And um, hopefully go out stronger next week. <laughs> Alright everybody, take care.